Alright, so I have this antenna installed on my roof. Now I need to bring the wire down the side of the house. So I just used a couple of uh, stainless steel eye hooks and pinched them in to kind of hold the wire, then used a couple of adhesive things when it hit the um, concrete block. Now I wanted to have a lightning arrestor or grounding system at the bottom of this thing before it entered into my house. So I'm using a DC um, shorted antenna, which means technically I've been told I don't need a lightning arrestor, um, but I definitely do want this guy grounded. So I'm running it through a lightning arrestor, and I might get a little bit of benefit from that, but it's also acting as a ground for the sheath of the coax. Um, and because I'm running this through a uh, mobile transceiver inside of my garage here, um, if I'm running that guy off of a battery, the sheath of the coax might be the only grounding that mobile transceiver has anyways. Now, um, I needed to put in a grounding rod because my house's grounding rod is all the way on the other end of the house. And um, people on the internet say, oh, pour a little water in and you can just ram that thing in by hand. That may work in clay, but it did not work in my sand. So I had to go get a four pound sledgehammer, which wasn't more expensive than the grounding rod, um, and pound that thing in. And it, you know, it took a couple of minutes, but it wasn't onerous to do. Um, the hardest part was that the rod would wiggle back and forth. And so I was using a piece of wood to steady it and to hit the top of the thing and hopefully not to mushroom the top of the copper rod um, so I could you know, still get the grounding acorn on. But um, I broke the piece of wood. So then I got a helper to hold it while I was pounding it down. And since I was pounding right on the end, I was worried about you know, putting a mushroom on the top and not being able to get the nut on. And so I put the nut on the rod to hold the grounding wire um, before I started pounding it in. So took a little while, got it pounded down all the way into the ground. I'm actually, you know, bearing an inch or two below grade, so no lawnmower is going to hit this guy. And instead of using like a solid six gauge grounding wire, like you'd use for like a home electrical panel, I'm using a stranded wire here. It's like, I think eight or 10 gauge. Um, because the crimp iron connector for my lightning arrestor is kind of small, and I knew I'd have to peel some of these strands away and crimp to, you know, a, a limited subset of them to connect to this lightning arrestor. Um, so, you know, this is not how you would do it for grounding a house electrical panel, but I'm doing this to ground my co and you know maybe the radio system a little bit. So um, put this in, ran the wire, clamped things on, um, did a little crimping, and then I'm just you know terminating my coaxial cable at the right lengths here. So you know I bought a kind of 50 foot pre-terminated roll and then I'm having to put two connectors on because I'm basically putting one connector on um, here to go into the lightning arrestor and then I screw the other end of the cable in, drill a hole, put the cable through the hole without a connector so I'd have a little tiny small hole, um, notch the window screen a little bit to get things in and then I just put a connector on on the inside and can hook that up to my radio.